Right, this is um, Paul Meets, Neil Weggersin, CEO of Brand Opus. Hi Neil, how are you? Hi Paul, I'm alright, thank you. Good to see you again. <laughs> Always nice to see you. Um, so we'll kick off with a bit of a look at Neil's career. Um, can I ask you a few couple of questions about that? So in terms of your career, how did you start off and where did you go? All my life I was agency side. Yeah. Um, 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 oddly enough, I did uh, I studied economics and did an MBA. Yeah. Um, I still think today that I'm a quirk in the industry because I've actually studied business. I, I can look at a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, from there on, I went to advertising, went to uh, work for a while at FCB. At the time, it was a great place, uh, still in Baker Street. Yeah. Uh, the big crash came way back when, the, the first one. Yeah. Um, eventually, I was dispatched to uh, Germany to run some other cognate of uh, across Europe um, uh, from Hamburg, Germany. And after a few years, came back to Intas, Unilever, um, board account director, global work, um, original links campaign. Yeah. Was done by Vintas, not by BBH. <laughs> <laughs> Puller, um, as the head planner, and um, Mark Hells, uh, to date, I'm not coming up with this whole archetypal thought of, of how the whole thing works. And then eventually the American came, and uh, one day I found myself in design and branding, <laughs> and the rest is history. Cool. So, in terms of brand opus, how did you come up with that idea? Where did that come from? So six years ago, uh, seven years ago by now, we were um, um, out of a job. Yeah. <laughs> All sorts of events in boardrooms. <laughs> and um, that's where we met for the first time. It is. <laughs> to consider what we go from here. Um, and to take a long, deep uh, look at myself, at my career, what I want to do. And um, eventually we decided to set up uh, a new agency that will do things in a particular way. Cool. So, a couple of quick questions here. So, in terms of the best bit of career advice you've been given, um, I suppose from the start, I don't know whether if there's one that particularly jumped out to you, you thought that's a good piece, piece of advice? Yeah, I think uh, that's, that's at the same time, um, uh, where I was out of work and thinking very deeply about should I join another agency or should I come back to advertising or should I set up on my own when I was in a party. Okay. That's <laughs> uh, what <one> does <laughs> up north. Uh, and um, uh, as, uh, as, as the party was getting lightened up, I came across um, uh, Robert Savile of Mother, the CEO, creative director and, uh, of Mother. And um, he said to me, um, How is it all going then? And I said, Pretty shitty, really. <laughs> And uh, he took me outside, literally, uh, <laughs> pinned me to the wall and said, you will set up your own agency, now is your time. And um, he cleared up his diary for a couple of days later and I went up to mother and spent a very long time with him uh, going through uh, um, a lot of stuff that happened when mother started and why and how they did it. And, uh, it was the day that changed history because out of that I knew what to do and I knew how to progress and it was very clear about the kind of um, things which are important and less important and uh, great bit of advice about how to set up a creative business and what to pay attention to and uh, how perhaps not to be greedy too much and how to not rely on other people and how to make sure that the people that you bring with you uh, are, the kind, are, are, are what matters. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's the same answer you got the so most inspirational person you've worked with or come across in your career to date. Anyone who anyone who sort of stands out. Most inspirational person. Yeah. Um, I always go back to the early days uh, when I was at FCB. Uh, the CEO was Tony Dalton, who was um, before that head of Sachis and um, one day, um, I was the car director then. Uh, some airline business called Dan Air, which no longer exists. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he came 
to a meeting with me one day and uh, on the way back on the train he said, uh, if there are some things that I think you're not quite fully on top of, do you mind if I teach them to you? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I grasped the opportunity, I think, and I said to him, everything that you want to teach me, I'm willing to learn. And I think six months later I was a different person. And it was absolutely inspirational in the way in which um, I grasped some of those key, subtle, subtle things that you need to understand the perfect industry. Yeah. To do with what matters, what doesn't matter, what's really important, what you can't let go of, and, and, and how it is that um, we apply ourselves to apply business in such a way that it makes a difference. Um, in terms of the biggest sort of creative opportunity or strategic challenge you've had to work on, um, looking back, I suppose that in sort of more recent times, what's what's the biggest opportunity or creative opportunity you've had the chance to work on for a brand? That's always a difficult question. Yeah, that's always a difficult question. Um, I think I think uh, one of the most challenging um, brands I had to work with was Belvedere. I think um, it's it's an amazing brand with an amazing story. It's. Um, um, going back to, to a time where um, the most expensive vodka you can buy was £12 and it was called Smirnoff or yeah. Absolute at a super premium of £13.50. <laughs> and one day Belvedere turns up and all of a sudden you buy a vodka for £35 and you think that's okay. Yeah. So when we go into this kind of luxury brand, something dramatic changes the entire category, ways, how we go, what do we do, how we spend money when we go out and feel very good about, about it at the same time, rather than, oh my god, how much was this? Um, and then they invent the category and um, they get, uh, they get um, bypassed by a very clever competitor called Gregos and Carl knows it and, and drives huge marketing campaigns and, and the market turns on its head and Belvedere is not at the point of disappearing, at the point of the whole idea seems to be unholy. There's also sort of issues with um, copyrights and intellectual property and legalese and marketing and there's a mess and, uh, and uh, they turned up one day and um, um, finally I'll, I'll, I'll owe this one to Robert as well because they walked into Mother first and, and said to Robert can you sort this out and, uh, and he took one look at the problem and he said I think actually you're in the wrong place and kept him on and said you got to read this guy. <laughs> <laughs> And it was, it was really difficult, it was really difficult to work out the depth of the issues and what needs to happen next and how do you restructure a brand. Um, and uh, I think it's five years later, um, it's up, it's running, it's fighting, it's doing very well, it's, it's a global extended brand across the world with um, fighting back and getting back to its feet. And the journey was amazing. Um, in terms of the creative industry itself as a whole, what do you sort of from where, where you're, you're sitting now, how do you sort of feel the market is at the moment? Um, crossroads for me, crossroads. Um, the, the, the UK um, creative industry is fantastic. Um, I think the whole world looks to us. I don't think we, um, we carve new territories every day. The, the, I know the Americans invented the whole thing, but I think there's, there's something about London and the way London creates and London works. Which is fascinating. Uh, I think we, we draw talent from everywhere, and uh, there's, there's a way the creative agencies are working, which is fascinating. But I think in the last um, even 10 years, uh, our world is changing dramatically. Um, the, on, on the one hand, we, we, we still have the pure creative that, that are interested in, in, in how uh, we make things different. On the other hand, we've got um, all big clients and all big brands are. Um, obsessed with evidence-based marketing, with research, with going to consumers, with asking consumers, um, working with consumers, and I think everybody who works in our industry knows that it does not help. Consumers does not know what happened yesterday, does not know what will inspire them the next morning. And uh, we need to find new ways of working with this um, um, modern client. We need to, to find a way to understand the science uh, on one hand, uh, but real science, not fake science, um, and, and drill into uh, behavioral economics, and drill into neuroscience, and mm. drill into semiotics, and 
internally in the NGC we've got to find a way to use this to drive creative, not to stop creative. Yeah. Uh, to find a way that how the creative talent gets inspired by different ways of looking at things and open up new challenges. Um, and we need to walk back to the client and make sure that the client understands that there is another side to, to, to the to and not, not everything that measured is 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 accurate and um, and, yeah. and that there are things that we need to be able to do in order to push things forward. Less the old industry will become marginalized, that, that we will be obsessed and we are obsessed and the clients are obsessed with safe marginal moves that they can check and make sure that they work, whereas what the industry should be is obsessed with how to leap forward in such a way that the brand can develop further, extend further, yeah. and drive it to new territories. If you could um, do anything differently, if you're looking back on your career, um, from the early days to sort of present day, if there's anything you thought, mm, perhaps I shouldn't have made that decision. Definitely, or, um, <laughs> definitely. I should have studied ancient Greek. Right, okay. <laughs> and linguistics. I think if people want to get into our industry and understand the meaning of things and understand how you get meaning into brands and how metaphors work and how you get people to move one place to the other, you've got to understand the source of language, the source of how we say what we say and the yeah. source of how we think about what we think. And I wish I'd known ancient Greek and know how to, how to read Homer in the original. And uh, that's the one thing I'd do if I go back. So have you said that to your, to your children? Absolutely. Have any of them studying? Yeah, they'll ignore me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of... Um, Brands that you would love to work on. Um, I don't know, name any, any big names, but any ones that particularly sort of stand out, or you think that might be an interesting brand to work on at some point in the future. Is there any that sort of stand out for you? I was uh, with a client of mine the other day, um, and um, we were we were um, talking about uh, traveling somewhere, and we kind of. Um, in the conversation, it was clear that the one thing that we need to do is that he needs to buy an airport and I need to brand the airport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it cannot be <laughs> that this is the way to travel. It cannot be that that's a design that functions. It can't be that every time I want to go to an hour meeting in Hamburg, I need to go through a shopping mall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not the way. It spent longer <laughs> going through security than it takes me to fly. Yeah. Okay, somebody's got this the other way around and somebody should be able to redesign this so that we go back and, and think that flying is okay and not this torrid experience and design can change experiences and design should change experiences and design should change things that we hate and things that we will integrate into our lives and I remember if flying was okay. Fine, so if you were going to speak to a young Neil Wegazim and have a conversation with him in a coffee shop, um, give him any advice, any tips what career advice would you give him in today's current market? Be different. Don't succumb to what they tell you. Don't believe anything anybody tells you. <laughs> and study ancient Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. Um, in terms of the inspiration bit again, I suppose in terms of the most inspiring thing you've, you've, you've seen, you've heard, you've come across recently, what's in, what inspires you? This new Sainsbury ad <laughs> that uh, Christmas ads, they're just done by AMV. I think it's fantastic. And I think it will be a, a changer, a game changer, because uh, it's not that it's reality moments, it's, it's the way it was put together and the way in which the reality looks real. And in this world, we are so confused about what's real and what's not real and what's actual. It's not like people complaining and you can see other brands in the picture. These real pictures. Um, and, uh, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. Inspirational piece of advertising. Okay. Um, if you weren't in the industry, so if you looked at sort of other, <laughs> other avenues at some point, I suppose you were thinking about that point before you started Brand Opus. Um, but if you were thinking about other jobs, other careers, paths you could have taken, what do you think you would have done? Oh, maybe I would become a sort of psychoanalyst. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the same. It's like you take brands on the sofa and you, and you, and you try and, and move them on and transform them into, into a better place. I think I think I'd probably do it with people as well. So yeah. <laughs> work, work with them and try to transform them and get them to do something uh, that they want to do. So, in terms of pitches, just to talk on pitches again, uh, if you've got the, the pitches, the, me the memorable ones in your mind, the funny ones, awkward ones, ones that didn't go the way you wanted them to go, do any that particularly stand out for you? 
So a long time ago, there used to be a thing called uh, the Marketing Forum Boat. And you used to go down to Southampton and get yeah. in a boat for three days. You'd sail out of Southampton and uh, you'd circle around Jersey and park somewhere between Guernsey and Jersey for three days. And uh, you can't get off and the clients can't get off. It's like speed dating. Yeah. Okay, you've got 20 minutes, you've got your computer in front of you and clients come, boof, boof, boof. And you've got 20 minutes to inspire them with this set presentation that uh, you've designed. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, horrible place. Anyway, uh, great fun to be here by all. And uh, uh, one day I'm sitting there, and very exciting. I've uh, got uh, uh, the mass people about to come for a presentation, um, and um, and uh, two of them turn up. Um, and uh, um, just as I'm about to start the presentation, um, PJ uh, was unfortunately now passed away. It's a great, great, great marketer, uh, inspirational character. Um, said to me, uh, "Turn off the computer, please." <laughs> that, that's the only young executive that's that's death blow on that. <laughs> what do you do without your computer? So we turned off the computer and said, let's go outside. So we go outside, the deck, it's windy. I think it was raining as well as <laughs> yeah. And he says, right, it's 15 minutes left, now you can present. <laughs> and years later, I complained to him and I said to him, PJ, what was this all about? He said, what's it all about? This is me finding out when you, can, you know what you're talking about rather than read the charts. And he said, well, he said well, why are you complaining about it? You're the one that survived it. You're the one who the business. <laughs> right, so quick fire questions now. Um, no time to think on these near. Football or rugby? Football. Tottenham or Arsenal? Oh, you know the way. <laughs> flat white or green tea? Anything but flat white. I'll take the green tea. Double espresso, just in case you really want to. <laughs> Um, creatives or suits? Suits. <laughs> All the way. All the time. Since the day I was born, I think. <laughs> Brightest person you've worked with to date? Or perhaps not just worked with, you've come across? Ooh, I think they'll go to Mark Hogan, who was a client of mine at McVitie's, at Mars, at Money Corp today, 20 years we worked together. I think everything we've ever done always succeeded against all the odds. Fantastic, inspirational. Brightest. Most creative person, I don't want you upset anyone here, but the most creative person you've ever worked with? Oh, that's easy, that's definitely Paul Taylor, <laughs> executive creative director, whom I've been working with for so long. I don't have to say, or he doesn't have to speak for us to understand each other. Independent or network? Independent. <laughs> Independent all the way. Money or happiness? Or a bit of both? <laughs> oh, I think they're both as fake as each other, I'll take the money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, finally, twist or stick? Oh, stick. <laughs> <laughs> just, one final, just one final question, just coming back to um, Brand Opus. Um, where, did the, where did the actual name come from? I always liked the word Opus. The word Opus means uh, a creative, a major creative effort, creative work. Uh, musicians use it when they do creative yeah. work, it's, it's Opus this and Opus that. And, uh, um, in, in, um, I always liked its application in alchemy. The alchemist used to talk about the opus, the, 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 the major work, the work that transforms. So yeah. I always thought this is relating to what we do. We, we do creative work that's important, that transforms. Brand opus it, it, is in the center of the brand. It's, it's, it's the brand for it to transform. It's got to treat, take and treat creativity seriously, and it's an important part, part of the work. And I always remember once I was uh, at an uh, exhibition at, uh, at um, um, White Field at Bermondsey, there was an Amsterdam Kiefer um, um, show, and in the middle of the show, uh, the, the one piece that caught my eye was called Opus Magnum, and it was a big oh. square, <laughs> and on top of it there was a, a circle, and a little snake that comes through a crack, and, uh, and he explained it, he, he said that creativity is, is for him, um, uh, defined by that idea about the opus, which is this combination for him of uh, uh, chaos and order. And the idea that the transformation has to start with, with what's already there. And you take what's already there and, and this combination of order and chaos, um, because if it's too ordered, it's dead. Yeah. You can't do anything interesting if it's too ordered. But if it's also if it's too chaotic, it just breaks up and disappears. So you've got to walk on that thin line between chaos and order in order to be creative and be able to transform. And I think that is the thought through which guides everything that we do. 
One and one final question to finish. Um, in terms of the future um, for Brand Opus, um, for yourself, what's, what do you see in the future? What lies ahead? I think we want to, um, as we grow and, and, and gain more clients and the business grows and the challenges of growing the business and making sure that we stick to our ideas and we stick to the way we do things and, and we stick to our culture and we make sure that going forward we stick to a way of working with brands that, that, that are capable to create the right environment that allows us to continuously transform the businesses and be creative about how we transform the businesses. Uh, and that needs to stay together however we grow forward. Cool. Thank you very much for your time there. Good to see you again. Thank you.